What are some of the common misconceptions around this initiative? Most common misconceptions is people think that it's the first $20,000 of an asset. So as I said, if you buy a $50,000 car, you don't know, get the first $20,000 off, it just gets written off normally. The thing that people forget about though, is when you get rid of the vehicle or you sell the vehicle, what happens is when you write it off, you're basically reducing the tax base or the cost of that car to zero, which means when you sell it, so normally with an asset, you pay tax on what you haven't written off. And if I bought a $20,000 asset, my income gets reduced by that asset purchase. It instantly writes off and writes off against my income. And in that case, I would pay tax on nothing because my profit for tax purposes is zero. David, welcome back to the Sideshed Podcast. Thanks, Mac. Good to be back. Absolutely. Um, so this is the second part of our conversation. For you guys out there that uh, didn't catch the first episode, we were talking about business structure. That might sound boring, but trust me, it was not because we went through the difference in being a sole trader, the difference between setting up as a business, the difference setting up the partnership. We touched on trusts and a whole bunch of cool things. So uh, go back and check that out because it is important that you guys are structured right according to, as David alluded to in that episode, what your goals are. Uh, in this episode, uh, we're going to be talking about the $20,000 instant asset write-off, which is uh, an initiative uh, by the Australian state government, correct? Federal. Federal, sorry. Federal government, yeah. Um, cool. Well, I, I think there's a lot of grey areas in this when it comes to people understanding what the hell it actually is. So yeah. the purpose of this podcast, I suppose, is to dispel some of those myths uh, and let people know exactly what it is so they don't trip up. Absolutely. It's a, it's a very the, – the interesting thing, it's, it's been around for a while, Matt. Um, mm. So the instant asset write-off measure, the funny thing about it is it's, it's actually a temporary measure which gets renewed every year, and it's been renewed every year for the last 13 years. Huh. So previously, many years ago, it was about $1,000. And then in the Gillard years, it increased to about $20,000 and it went up to $30,000 and it floated around. And the interesting thing about it, it's always been a temporary measure. It's not permanent. So it gets renewed every budget. What's the point of it? Is it like to stimulate economy or like what's the... Pretty much, yeah. They help stimulate the economy. Um, they help investment in businesses. Um, and it expanded massively during COVID. So it expanded massively. Um, and I'll, I'll explain I'll, the reason why is it's really good for businesses is because of this one fact. So in traditional accounting speak, um, or in accounting terms, when you buy an asset, whether it's a, a big machine or a car, you don't get a deduction immediately. You actually have to, what called depreciate it or write it off over several years. So for example, if I bought a car for $50,000, I don't get a $50,000 in, in normal accounting terms, I don't get a $50,000 deduction up front. I have to claim $10,000 a year for the five years. Okay. What the instant asset write-off does is it allows you to claim it all at once. So you get a big deduction when you buy, so it gets treated like a, like a normal expense. Up to 20 grand. Up to 20 grand, correct. So that means let's let's just go back a couple of steps here and help yeah. people understand. First of all, what sort of assets this applies to, and then second of all, what write off means. Because so write off means people think write off means they're going to give me twenty grand. No, write off just means deduction. So it just gets treated like like you going to Bunnings and spending two hundred dollars on tools. Write off means it just gets deducted at once. Okay, and so if I'm buying say two hundred bucks worth of tools, are they give? They're not going to give not giving me two hundred dollars worth back, are they? So how does that work? No. So it like reduces your tax. So let's say I um, I made a thousand dollars, I would get taxed on a thousand dollars. But if I spent two hundred dollars on tools, it comes off the money I've I've invoiced, and instead of paying tax on a thousand dollars. I pay tax on $800. So you take the $200 off. 
So remember, you always pay tax on profit, which is income, less expenses. Right. So what this means, and so the, the advantage of the instant asset write-off, let's say I bought something for $20,000. So let's say the normal life, I made $20,000 of profit and I paid tax on $20,000 of profit. But if I bought a $20,000 asset, my income gets reduced by that asset purchase. The, it instantly writes off and writes off against my income. And in that case, I would pay tax on nothing because my profit for tax purposes is zero. So is this relevant to business, the business or the individual? Business. Has to be businesses. So sole traders, companies, not employees. Has yeah. to be a business. Okay. So essentially, if you have a business and you were, you made, say, $100,000 in profit yep, and you bought a vehicle worth $20,000... You'd pay tax on eighty thousand dollars, not a hundred thousand dollars. Okay. So that's where that is. Now, what assets are available? It's actually basically a very wide range. So there's machinery, there's tools, there is, um, yeah. you know, <laughs> fortunately not. The, the 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 main and it actually the good advantage of this map it actually includes secondhand assets as well. So if you bought yeah. because. Remember, the, the thing with the instant asset write-off is it has to be up to $20,000. So if I bought an asset for $21,000, it doesn't count. Not the grand of it? No. None it of it? It has to be under twenty grand. Wow. Okay. But, but you can apply it against multiple assets. So let's say I bought 10 pieces of machinery at $10,000 each, so $100,000. I get the instant asset write-off on each piece of machinery, so I get a, I get a big deduction for a hundred grand up front. So it's on a per right. asset basis. Okay, but provided that asset itself is not more than twenty grand. Correct. So you have to be finding assets that are from zero to nineteen no, no, no. <laughs> Correct. And the tricky and the tricky thing is, is like obviously the most common asset any business owner will get is a car. Right. And there's not many cars out there under 20 right. grand. Yeah. Um, but secondhand vehicles do count. So if you're starting off and you might get a cheap, a cheapo ute when you're starting off, um, it will be under the instant asset right, which is very common. You might buy a secondhand commercial vehicle when you're just starting out. Man, I wish more people did do that. You know, you see yeah. so often these people that go out in business and they go and buy the new Commodore. And... Oh, they've got a hundred grand Ram. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it, it does help on that point. Um, things that are excluded from it, um, one being uh, uh, websites. So software doesn't count. So if you get a website done, it doesn't count. I think um, there are, I mean, you would know better than I, but I, or I certainly know a couple of years ago, there were incentives where people, you, you could get a, um, I can't remember what it was called, but there was some sort of incentive for digital services. There was, and that was in the 2023 year, it was called a technology boost. Yeah. So yeah. what happened was you got an extra deduction. So you got a 20% bonus deduction. So if I spent $1,000 on a website, I'd actually get a deduction for $1,200. They'd give me a bonus $200. Right. A $200 deduction, not bonus $200. I should right. clarify <laughs> that. Yeah. Okay. So that was an initiative kind of coming out of COVID and all that and all that. So it lends itself more to hard physical assets. Yes, hard physical assets, for hard physical income producing assets. So like Tool. tools, machinery, equipment, you know, you know, if you're setting up a cafe, you know, fridges, ovens, yeah. okay. things like that. So those sort of pieces of machinery, it's, um, there's been a lot of calls to expand it. Um, I don't think they have, but as I said, it's a temporary measure every year. So they can change the number basically every single year. So it will, it actually is meant to go down to $1,000 at the end of, at 30 June, 2025. But what you will see is the next budget, it'll probably be reinstated again for 20,000 or it might even be bigger. Got it. Um, two, so this is valid right now for this current financial year. 
So if people are looking at purchasing, like say computer, office computers, yes, all that kind of stuff, that is included. Absolutely. Yeah. So office office furniture and equipment and you know, office technology, phones, computers, those are counted under that. The, the, the main thing is it has to be installed and ready for use. Sure. So if you bought a car now on, on waiting and you didn't get the keys until after 30 June, you have to have, it has to be ready for use. Got it. Okay. Interesting. So a couple of questions. The first one is uh, in, the, in the space of how many people you come across that actually understand this. Um, so, and then off the back of that, what are some of the common misconceptions around this initiative? Uh, most common misconceptions is people think that it's the first $20,000 of an asset. So as I said, if you buy a $50,000 car, Got you it. don't get the first 20,000 off. It just gets written off normally. Got it. So that's one thing you gotta be careful of. The other thing you gotta be careful of is the installed and ready for use. So what generally happens is during the last few weeks towards the end of the year, everyone wants to buy a car to make sure they bring their tax down. Right, but they go on back order and you can't get it. Correct. Yeah. So what you'll see is, is if you do it closer to June, it's a mad scramble because then you have all these brokers trying to sort out finance and trying to get everything over the line. So if you ask a bro if you try and get if you try and get a broker's attention in June, Chances are you're not going to get too much attention because they're all going to be flat chat, busy sorting out finance for the other 20 people who want their cars before 30 June. Sure. <clears throat> is there a limit on how many of those, on how many of these you can, or is it just strictly per asset? Per asset. Huh. That's a pretty, pretty decent initiative, especially yeah. if you're a decent sized business. Correct. The thing that people forget about though is when you get rid of the vehicle or you sell the vehicle. So what happens is when you write it off, you're basically reducing the tax base or the cost of that car to zero, which means when you sell it, so normally with an asset, you pay tax on what you haven't written off. So like if I had a car and it was $50,000 and let's say I wrote it down to $40,000, so it was worth $40,000. But if I sold it for fifty thousand dollars, I've got to pay tax on that profit because the value of the car is only forty thousand dollars, and I made ten thousand dollars profit. Same thing applies here. If you write it down, but, you're, but what about the depreciation fact uh, part component of that? The depreciation factors in, but you got to pay. But you're paying you are paying tax on the extra amount, the money you made on top of the value of the car. So if you write it off and it's worth nothing for tax, but then you sell it for something. Oh, I see. So if you, because you write off it, if you bought a $19,000 car, right. you wrote it off and you were able to sell it for 19 grand on the secondhand market again because you found a dude, you're going to pay tax on that full 19 grand. Okay. And what would the tax bracket be on that? Whatever your marginal tax rate is or whatever tax rate, whether it's it a sole trade or a company. Time. Yeah. Got it. Okay. Yeah, that so, makes... But what about through the business? Same thing. So if I was a sole trader and I sold and made $19,000 profit, that's just an extra 19 grand I've got to add onto my income. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So it, people forget about that. And what happens in a couple of years time, they go, why is my tax bill so high? It's like, well, you sold that asset, but it right. was, you know, it, it's just understanding there's a, there's the, it's the double edged sword to it. What, what, if you get a benefit now, there might be a cost in the future. Mm -hmm. But most people don't sell assets at a profit. Very rarely you do. But the main thing is probably in the secondhand market if you're able to, and something is rare. Got it. So the main thing also is making sure, yeah, installed and ready for use is a very big one. And making sure the $20,000 is exclusive of GST. So remember, if you buy something for twenty one thousand dollars, the actual cost is nineteen grand once you take the GST off it. Got it. Okay. So is this something? Is this a good initiative? 
it's a good initiative because one, it allows you to get a big tax deduction early. So when you're starting out, like, you know, let's say in your first year you made 50 grand and, you know, you had to pay five grand for tax. But if you bought a $20,000 asset and you don't have to pay cash for that asset, you can finance the asset as well. So that way you're not outlaying 20 grand all in one go. You might have financed it to pay it off over a few years. Okay. So you're not down that cash. <laughs> But you're saving five grand of tax potentially because you know you bring your income down, and that's an extra five grand you can keep in the business. Got it. To you know buy new assets or keep the business running, so you mm. don't have that tax bill at the start. Okay. Yeah. That's, that's where it spurs the investment and keeps the money in the business. I know. I know. Especially, I mean, a slight tangent, but when I started out in business, and they probably, probably perhaps it's still the same, but again, terrible financial advice back then where it didn't pay tax the first year, then had to pay double the second year and just not having that allocated funds made available. Yeah. And the, the, the treat, as I said, which we did bring up before, the thing that you, when you're buying an asset and utilizing this, you don't have to pay cash. Right. You, you, if you finance that asset, you still get the same treatment as if you paid for it cash. So you can finance it, meaning you're saving your cash flow but you're still getting that nice big deduction in the gut in the, in one felt swoop and that helps you get things going. Okay. So things for people to consider out there. If, if like, if you are going to be uh, eligible for the instant asset write-off, it's, it needs to be a income producing uh, tool asset. asset, whatever it might be. So that typically would be a tool or a vehicle or something along those lines. Yep. Um, <clears throat> it needs to be, under 20 grand or up to 20 grand, I should say, uh, excluding the EST component. Um, anything else? That's basically the main, oh, it's got to be installed and ready for use before 30 June. Ah, uh, got it. So you've got to have it actually in your hands in working order by then. Yep. Yes. Um, okay, cool. That's pretty much it. Yeah, it, it, it's as straightforward as that. Um, and as I said, Watch every year because budget time they will announce and whether it's going up or going down. So in theory, if you keep an eye on budget time, normally ask your accountant, has the instant asset writer changed value or has it been extended? Because it, it, it is a continual thing. And my gut says that it'll actually probably be expanded a bit more next year because of the economic headwinds about what's going on. And just to give people context, if you've got say a million buck business or whatever, and you buy 10 grand's worth of, I don't know, office computers or whatever yeah. it owns, what does that actually look like to the business? Depending on if you're a sole trader or a company. So let's just say, you, let's say you're a company, uh, you buy 10 grand of equipment, it will save you two and a half grand of tax. Okay. Yeah. And as a, as a sole trader, could be three grand. Could be a little bit more if you're paying a higher rate of tax. I see. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, that's pretty straightforward, kind of. <laughs> Get some advice. My biggest thing is a lot of people. One, one of the big things I actually leave you with, Matt, is a lot of people want to do the instant asset write-off, but they're not actually going to get a tax benefit from it. So if your business is like, if you've got a low lead year, and you're like, oh, I'm going to buy this asset to save tax. Get some advice first, because it might be worthwhile to actually park it in the next year. Because if you're not paying much tax anyway, there's no point going through this hassle to save very little tax. You want to make sure you get the biggest bang for your buck when you do it. Mm. So the timing of it all can make a massive difference. So when you're doing getting the advice, when you're doing the asset, don't ask me the day of each settlement. Ask me when you're speaking to a broker, just going, hey, is it worthwhile to do it now? Or should I push it back a few more months to the next financial year? Got it. Okay. All right. Awesome. Well, hopefully that was useful for, to you guys. Um, yeah, it's a good takeaway there for me for sure. I think it's a very grey area, which I yep. like to think we put a splashed a bit of colour on. Um, if you guys have got any questions about that, let us know. But otherwise, uh, mate, I think that's a wrap. What do you think? Awesome. Yes, that's fantastic. Look, main thing takeaway: just get some advice early before you do it. Totally agreed. All right. 
Hope you're also useful to you guys. Ciao. New Zealand-based home renovation company, 6,593% ROAS. Sydney-based solar company, 2,700% ROAS. Hunter region-based bathroom renovation company, 5,616% ROAS. Melbourne-based building company, 13,182% return on ad spend. Adelaide-based solar company, 2,881% return on ad spend. Guys, the list goes on and on. If you are a trade-based business and you work with projects like roofing, solar, bathroom renovations, kitchen renovations, anything like that, head across to tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. tradey.wiki forward slash pod for podcast. Book in a conversation. It is game changing.